Hi, my name is Ethan, and I'm from sunny Central Florida. You're watching Trucker Josh and Diesel on the best channel on YouTube, TJV. Enjoy. Morning, everybody. Renfell, Saskatchewan. Got ourselves woken up for a new day. We're headed towards home today, so we're going east into Manitoba. About five hours of driving to do today, then we have a couple days off before we take this, uh, or before we head down to Iowa. front of me anyway all right that's okay I was trying to beat him but he wants to be in front of me we we're both leaving the parking lot at the same time that's okay so we had a good sleep in 400 meters turn right on highway 47 and then turn left at 140 meters sounds good to me Karen Sounds like a good time. Well, this guy's just going into the lot here probably to switch up his trailers. They have this special lot here. No one else is allowed to park here except for these pike drivers who pull two 53-foot trailers. I wouldn't mind doing that. I'll just try it out. I've never done that before. It seems like it would be a lot of extra work. But you probably get paid well for it. I mean, you are pulling two loads, right? one trailer behind me because I go a lot more places than those guys go those guys pretty much just stay on the prairies turn right on highway 47 and then turn left in 140 meters they run between like Winnipeg and Calgary Winnipeg and Edmonton and everything in between just the prairies or as I do the continent aside from Mexico all right there mr. Ford find your gear come on bud I believe in you. Let's see if we can get ourselves onto the road here. So how was your guys night? How was your guys day? What are you guys up to? In 100 meters, turn left on Trans Canada Highway, Highway 1. Absolutely, that's a great idea. Let's get onto Highway 1. Trans Canada. This is sort of like our interstate. It's a highway that goes from coast to coast along the southern part of Canada. Not much going on up north, so we don't got many highways going up there. I mean, northern Manitoba and Nunavut, the, the big territory above my province, they don't even have roads that go up there. You gotta fly up there. So Nunavut is the one territory I have not been to. And I haven't been to Alaska or Hawaii yet either. We do go there, but I haven't had the pleasure of going yet. That is a triangle yield sign and there is nobody coming, so we go. Continue on this road for 427 kilometers. 10-4. Let's do that. Let's go home. We're in beautiful Manitoba right now, my, my home province. Our own little corner of the country that everybody flies over. That's okay. Don't mind us, we're just doing our thing down here. Just fly right on over. We like the peace and quiet. So it's a little bit foggy-ish here. You can see that all the trees around us have that hoarfrost on it again. From the, uh, from the fog that was 
Like, look at that big one off on the left over there. Beautiful. It's like a big ice train. It's a little small on the fisheye lens, I guess. These off to the right, they're the same thing, just not quite as big as that one. They look like decorations. That's what the fog does in wintertime. So, like I said, weather always comes from the west and moves east for the most part on the prairies. So, I was in Saskatchewan yesterday and it was foggy, so I assumed overnight that that fog would travel over Manitoba, and I was right. It's been coming and going today. It's sort of, I think I'm on the tail end of it here. I don't think we'll really have to deal with it for the most part. But another two hours down this road with all of this beautiful scenery around us, all of these magnificent landscapes. And we'll be done this part of the trip. We'll be done this trip. We're gonna go home for the weekend. Not too sure what we have planned yet. I think we're just going to relax. I got a lot of work to do around the house. I gotta get the snow off the roof. Probably work on our master bedroom a little bit more. Redoing the drywall in there and a couple of things, sort of updating the master bedroom. Redoing the master ensuite and stuff. It's sort of been my winter project. And I've got to crawl under the house when I get home to see if I can shut off the water so that I can take the old bathtub out of there. There's got to be switches. Whoever installed that bathroom had to have put on, off valves, right? Well, they didn't put them above the floor, so I've got to go under the crawl space, under the house, and see if they put them there. And if they didn't, well, then I'm going to have to shut the water off for the entire house when I, when I can cut these water lines then, right? And then go to the store and buy, like, a plug for the end of the plex pipe or the plexi pipe, whatever they call it. It's all plastic pipes. We don't have any copper piping left in the house. I have to plug those off so I can turn the water back on and take that tub out of there without, you know, spraying water all over, all over the place under the house. While I'm under there, I also want to take a look at uh, how I can insulate it because our crawl space isn't insulated and neither is our floor. So we have very cold floors in the wintertime and once we have a baby, we're going to want to make sure that our floors aren't so cold. So I've got to insulate the exterior walls of the crawl space and possibly even the floor, but we'll see if we can just insulate the crawl space and heat it down there. That's just stuff I gotta do this weekend. You know, just got a little to-do list going on. Plus, we gotta take the garbage away. So I got stuff to do. Plus, like I said yesterday, there has to be a time this weekend when I can just sit on the couch and stare at that black frame hanging on the wall with moving pictures in it. A good amount of time. I just want to sit and just watch the TV. We'll see if I have time for that. We're in a bag, winter peg. I need some fuel. Fill me up. Fill up both tanks. We'll drop our trailer off. Go home and enjoy a nice weekend. Stare at that black box on the wall a bit. I keep saying that, but in reality, I probably won't have time. But we can dream and hope. Traffic lights. I'll give you one guess where we are. In what city? A capital city. If you guess Winnipeg, you guess the correct and obvious answer if you're from here. Winnipeg has an obsession, a strange obsession with traffic lights. And uh, their city planning has been known to be a little questionable from time to time. But here we are on the perimeter, the Trans-Canada, our interstate, going around the city of Winnipeg, slowly making our way. Stoplight to stoplight. Dragging 45,000 pounds of wood. You know, they're so worried about the climate. You know, every time you make me stop and start, I burn a whole lot more fuel than if I could just drive right on through. Yeah, just saying. Just saying. 
I'm all for the warmer weather, so I'm, I don't care either way, really, but I'd rather, you know, save the time. That's what I'm thinking. I'd like to save the time. Hey, you're all big into the save the whales thing, so traffic lights aren't helping that cause at all. Greta would be very disappointed with all these traffic lights. I think we should build overpasses and make her smile, you know? I think so. It'd make me smile too. Everybody's happy then, really. Everybody's happy. Overpasses. Ah, but nobody listens to me. That's okay. Eventually the right person will watch my video. And that person knows a person who's going to tell another person that knows a person that has a cousin who works in government who's going to tell another person that they need to do something because Trucker Josh said so. And they're going to nod and say, okay, and then proceed to do nothing. So, you know, the message will get there eventually. And Winnipeg wouldn't want to disappoint another traffic light. The last one. This is the last one, though. Wanted to make sure that we were well aware that we were passing around Winnipeg one last time before we get out of the city. And we're way back here in the line too, so I hope I'll even make it when it turns green before it turns red again. Lovely Winnipeg. Lovely Winnipeg. Is there anybody from Winnipeg or Manitoba area that knows Winnipeg well that could uh, that would uh, dispute what I'm saying about Winnipeg's obsession with traffic lights? Cause you know, I'm only one person. There's like, what, 700,000 people that live just in the city here. We got one point something million that live in the province. So uh, is there any of you out there that would disagree with me and say that, no, no, Winnipeg city planners are on point. They do a really great job with their roadways and they definitely do not use traffic lights too much. And we could definitely not use any more overpasses. Is there anybody around here that would that would say that? That would disagree with me? Let me know down below in the comment section if you're from Winnipeg and what you think of Winnipeg's road systems. Maybe I'm wrong. Hey, I'm just one guy. I don't even live in the city. <laughs> I'm an outsider. I know what you're going to say. I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say I complain too much. Chuck a job! You complain too much, truck it out. Yeah, yeah, it's hard not to when going around Winnipeg. <laughs> but hey, Winnipeg is in my home problem. I'm allowed to, isn't that how the rules work? If you live there, you can complain about it. I sort of live nearby. That's the capital of the province I live in, but I don't live in Winnipeg. I don't want to live in any city. That's personal choice. I don't like living in big cities, but we're home. Chevy, say hello to every everybody missed you. Everybody missed you, right? Are you sure? Did they really miss me? They all did. Every single one of them. Except one of you. No, they all missed you. They all did. Such a good boy, Chevy. Such a good... Oh, thank you. Thank you. But I don't need any kisses. Thank you. Very good boy. Who else we got around here? We got the weasel down here. How's it going, buddy? Relaxing. We got Big Frank up there. Foster boy. Say hello to the good people. Everybody loves you. Everybody. Such a good boy. He's been eating much better too. When we first uh, took him on as a foster, it was really hard to get him to eat, but he's actually started eating really well. Just takes a little bit of extra effort with him. A uh, little bit, uh, takes a little bit of effort get him to eat but we we figured out a way we got a new system we're looking for a wiener looking for a wiener around here any wieners in here looking for a wiener wiener are you sitting in here by yourself sulking because mom's at work is that what's going on here all by yourself this is what he does when brit's not home i don't matter at all i hardly exist in his mind is she back yet not yet, Frankie. Don't get too excited. But everybody missed you too, buddy. Even if you didn't miss them. Well, yeah, it's good to be home. A bit of a longer trip than usual. And the truck goes into the shop for a safety. 
and I've got to get the snow cleared off the roof because it's built up quite a bit again. And I like to keep that clear so that not only is there uh, less weight being pushed down on the roof, but uh, it also stops uh, ice from forming up there because we still need to move our furnace to go underneath the house. And I figured out how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this myself to save ourselves a lot of money because it really won't be that difficult. Right now here in our furnace room, this is our natural gas furnace. So a big shout out and a big thank you to the guys working out there in the fields, bringing us our natural gas and oil. Thank you for keeping my house warm. And those of you who want to charge me extra just for using heat in my house in the winter time, I have a different thing for you. Uh, I can't do, I can't show it on YouTube though. They'll kick me off. So here's uh, the furnace and it sucks the air in here and it also sucks the air in from the other side of the house. Anyways, goes up here and the heat blows into the attic and goes through insulated ducting goes through the roof and it comes out little ports like this all over the place in the roof, right? The problem is that the insulated ducting isn't insulated enough. It warms up our attic. And what that does is it heats up the top of the roof enough to melt the snow at the very top. That water runs down and you know we have this veranda out front here. So it meets the house right about here. And you can see there's been damage up here before from this. This is why we have a new roof on, but it gets stuck right in the valley right there. And the ice goes down there and then it builds up, builds up, builds up till we have a lake behind there, right? And it's called an ice dam. So the problem will be solved by taking insulated ducting, the same thing as this, except instead of the furnace blowing up into the attic, it's gonna come here, it's gonna end off here, and be the top there. This thing's gonna be flipped around, and it's gonna blow out the side and down into the crawl space. You guys wanna come check out the crawl space with me? It's kinda spooky down there, we're gonna need a flashlight. All right, if you, uh, if you don't like spiders, join the club, pray for me. We're going in. Let's do this. So this is our dungeon. This is where we keep the people we don't like. All right, so we're gonna slowly go down. And if I get eaten alive by hungry spiders, well, you'll know where to find me. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, okay. We are now in the dungeon. So this is where our water system is. We put this in a year ago. Actually, we have really good water here now because of that. Water filter there, water pump over there. All right, so it's a little messy down here, so I don't mind that. So this is a crawl space underneath the house. I've never taken you guys in here. A lot of junk in here. This is all from the previous owners, all this junk. So I gotta take all that out of here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna bring down the furnace, uh, air, down through here, right? It's gonna come down right over there. And we're gonna have insulated piping that hang from these joists that make their way all the way down, all the way to the other side of the house, way over there. I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna do it myself. Okay, that's what's underneath our house. All right, so uh, let's get out of here. It's actually not that bad. There's no spiders under there right now. I'm just sort of making it sound worse than it is. It's winter time, they're all dead. <laughs> the best part of winter is all the spiders die or they, they hide anyways. So that will go down underneath here. You can hear it's on right now. Instead of blowing into there, and blow down there. And then, first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where we want all the vents along the outside of the house, all the way around the house, and cut the holes, install the vents. And then we're gonna hook up all of the insulated ducting with those vents. And then we're gonna come in here and just flip this around so that it blows underneath. All right, all right, makes sense, makes sense. Good, that's a project for sometime this winter. 
hopefully as soon as possible as soon as i can afford to get all of the uh materials and stuff what that'll do is that'll stop the heat from being blown into the attic and hopefully solve the ice damming problem we put a new roof on here now so hopefully that won't leak this spring if it does we got a five-year warranty but that's what's i think is causing the ice damming up there i could be wrong but uh that's that so i've been yapping here for eight minutes already at the end of this vlog Thanks for joining me today, guys. We're going to be home for a few days. Uh, probably not going to film every day. Got some work to get done. But as soon as the truck is out of the shop and safety, we will be headed down to Iowa. So don't forget to tune in then. I'll see you later. If you are a duct installer and install heating systems regularly through the crawl spaces of the houses and you want to give me some tips down below in the comment section, I am open to learn. I'm an open book, okay? I'd appreciate it. Thanks a lot. See you later.